it's time for the final episode of the melodrama Fearless Quilting Finishes. I know you've been waiting with bated breath to find out how this series will end. Will the quilting sandwich ever find true happiness with her arranged marriage to the square cornered binding? Or will she run away with a dashing curved edge? Undoubtedly, binding a quilt lacks drama, but without the finished edge, your quilt just isn't finished. So without further anticipation, I'd like to present Fearless Quilting Finishes, Binding the Edges, next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. Whether you're going to choose fabric that matches your border for your binding or you're going to use something contrasting, there are two standard widths, two and a half or two and a quarter. Usually the two and a half inch width is chosen if the final stitching is going to be sewn by machine stitching in the ditch so they have a little extra fabric to catch on the underside and the two and a quarter is chosen if you're going to do the last stitching by hand. So make the choice yours, whatever width you'd like. And I like to work with bias strips because sometimes it has a little bit more give and play to it. And especially if you have curved seams, you need bias for sure at that point. The fabric can be cut easily rather than just always cutting on the 45 degree angle. You can make your fabric more accommodating by doing some creative folding. So really any size will work for the bias strips. You fold it in half to get a 45 degree angle. Then you create a arrowhead. You fold it again and I pre-press this so that you, you would have to do that at this point and then fold the angle on top of itself and match up those folds. So along this edge you have a whole stack of folded fabric. We're going to cut that off. We're going to make that a crisp edge or a clean cut edge. But I want to point out that there are rulers that are made that are two and a half or two and a quarter inch wide, or you can just use your traditional six by 24 inch ruler. The choice is yours. So my first cut is going to be just to cut off that multitude of folds and then cut your 45 degrees. Angle it and cut. And just keep cutting and cutting and you soon will have all of your strips for your project cut as you get the idea. And I'm obviously cutting the two and a half inch width. Then after cutting this, you're going to be needing to sew these strips together. And I'm going to show you this in contrasting fabric so that you can see how this works. And here we have some red strips that contrasting will be putting together. And you see the 45 degree angled ends. And with right sides together, you would meet these together and overlap. Overlap them, oh, it doesn't have to be an exact amount, but overlap the ends so that you have those little bunny ears. And you're going to stitch from the intersection where they overlap down to the other intersection. And right, let me get these cut edges from point to point that gives you definitely a line to stitch. This next piece has been stitched. And for the first step of, the, of this quilting project, we like to turn under the starting edge a generous fourth of an inch, press it, and then get some paperback fusible web and fuse it to that area. And I cut it just a little bit too long. And I can just tear this off. Now the next step is to fold it in half and press with wrong sides together and meeting long edges to get your binding. So that you'll be doing the pressing and I'll show you how to start this at the machine. 
the stitching and the folding of the binding requires just a few steps. And I've aligned the raw edge of the binding to the raw edge of the project. And notice I have a pin about three to four inches from the starting point. We're going to start to sew, not at the very edge, but at this pin mark. There are other pins. There are pins at each corner. I've marked a fourth of an inch seam allowance or a fourth of an inch mark at the corner at each of the corners. There's that little dot. Hard to see, so I always put a pin at the corner so I can stop. That's going to be my stopping point and also the starting point. So it's a good pin mark at each corner. Not a lot of pinning of the binding. You can kind of use your finger pins to do some of the pinning. So I'll start to stitch with a fourth of an inch seam allowance. I have a foot on my machine that has a fourth of an inch width. I have a quilting needle and I have quilting thread, all purpose cotton thread. Now my stopping point is going to be this pin that I'm readjusting and let me get it perpendicular to the edge. That's the important thing. And as I get closer, you'll get an idea of what's happening. Fourth of an inch seam. Just stitch, straight stitch away, and as I get close to that fourth of an inch, sink the needle in the fabric. You may want to back stitch just to secure it. Cut the threads, so you're stopping a fourth of an inch from the edge. Raise the presser foot, remove the pin, and then fold the fabric at a 45 degree angle. It's really easy to figure out where that ends. You'll fold it so it aligns at that cut edge, 45 degrees. Now you notice where I'm placing my fingers of my left hand next to the edge of the fabric. I'm going to fold this back so that the binding aligns, the fold of the binding aligns at the cut edge of the quilt at the corner. And there's a little tuck underneath here that's a, at a 45 degree angle because we're mitering the corner. Slip the fabric underneath the presser foot, lower the foot. You can start sewing at the fold. You don't have to start sewing at that fourth of an inch and stitch. And, and let me just get this aligned a little bit better. There we go. And as we start to sew, we just sew again to that other end. Now, the reason that I did this stitching is to show you what's going to happen so that you get, you stitched in a miter. And you can see what I just stitched. And as I fold this later on to the wrong side, after you would do all four corners, notice how the 45 degree angle is forming. So you would fold under the fabric, pin, and then you see what you get. You get a 45 degree corner, just like a picture miter. And you pin it to the wrong side, and we're gonna sew that down a little bit later. So that's why you do that folding. At each corner, you're going to do that same step, the same processes. And as I go to the ironing board, I'm going to show you what you do when you meet the two ends together. We had that little fusible biased, fusible tape, the paperback fusible web. Well, here we have the starting point and the ending point. Here's the starting point and here's the ending point. And you're going to tuck the ending point in the middle and I have way too much length, and you, it's, but you're gonna wrap it together. So now I'll remove the paperback fusible web and tuck the two together. And you have to do a little finger manipulation there and then just fuse, and that's kind of holding it in place for you. You trim off the excess length that you have here. And let me show you on another fabric how this is accomplished because it's really a great way of finishing those edges together. On this sample, then, I have pressed those together, and now I just would continue to stitch, stitch that seam. So they're already tucked inside of each other. Then the seam has been stitched, and you wrap it to the under edge. On another sample, I've shown how this binding is wrapped to the underside and pinned at a corner in particular. You can see the fabric coming around the edge and that miter is as well as it is on the front. Stitching the ditch, stitch in that well, the seam, that kind of crazy term that we have, and just stitching, straight stitching, and I'll take out the pins and as I'm stitching, hopefully just stitching in that little groove, you might want to go a little slowly as you're getting to the corner. Slowly pull out that pin, stop with the needle in the corner, 
and make a corner. And as you see, I'm just gonna sew a little bit of it to show you that I've kind of stitched in the ditch, stitched in that well, the seam, and then caught the fabric on the underside to make a square corner. So what if your quilt project isn't square? You may have a hexagon or an octagon. Well, take a deep breath and relax. Remember, this is Fearless Quilting Finishes. What I like to do when teaching is kind of build upon the techniques, first starting with a 90 degree corner, then going to a hexagon and octagon, because you're gonna build, learn from what you learned in the past. This table runner, where you often find an unusual angle, can have the same neat corners of the binding by using a pin to do the marking. I used a pin earlier to mark at the corners, but this time the pin will really dictate where we're stopping and where we're doing the folding. So you can see my non 90 degree corner. Doesn't matter what it's called, you're gonna treat them all in the same way and place that pin. You're going to just kind of place a pin right in the middle, just anchor it down. Here's another corner. So we'll place a pin, kind of eyeball it, just pin it right through. And that's the important markings. I've already started by mitering the corner at the 45 degree angle. This is what I just showed you earlier. And you get that nice mitered look by doing that folding technique, folding it to the back. But now I'll show you how to continue for this shape. Again, fourth of an inch seam allowances. They're pretty standard for quilting projects. And I'm going to continue sewing this seam until I get to the pin. Now notice the pin is at an angle. It's not perpendicular to the edge. It's angling downward. So I'm gonna use a stiletto to kind of help. I have the stiletto at the pin area. And as I get to my stiletto mark, sink the needle, just tack the stitch down and cut the threads. Now here is again where the pin stays into place and I fold back the binding, getting it out of the way and making certain that the binding edge and that pin align, finger press. Then fold the binding back on itself, forming at that corner. And I'm going to remove the pin and you can see at this point you have an angle that resembles, it's just mimicking what the outer edge is shaped like. And then you place your foot at the angle and just keep stitching. And now as I get to this corner again, I'm just going to put my stiletto, kind of marking where that pin is, because I can't really see it, you can only feel it. Back stitch, cut the threads, and then do that aligning technique again, align it, so that the pin and the fold are on top of each other or the fold is on top of the pin and do a little tuck. You, want, you need that tuck in the fabric so that it can go around the corner. And I think you kind of get the idea. You have to almost just practice it, but when you look at it at this point, notice the unusual shape. But as I wrap this to the underside, and I'll pin it for you. And now I'll wrap this side. You can see I get that same miter. You might have to work at it, there we go. That same miter look, only it's at a hexagon or octagon shape. And if I did it right, we'll see. We'll both be surprised at the same time. Yes, I kind of have that same tuck on the underside. You might have to put a pin in that spot. Now, stitch in the ditch. You can stitch in that groove of the seam with a straight stitch, or as you may have noticed on the sample, as well as on the finished table runner, we've used a decorative stitch for the quilting and the stitching of the binding. You'd have to change your feet, put on an open toe foot, a decorative stitch foot, and here's a close-up of attaching the binding, the final stitching, using that decorative stitch to carry through the same look. Honestly, the decorative stitches are easier to stitch because it, co it covers more ground and you'll be assured of catching the binding from the wrong side. So whether it's a corner, a square corner, an octagon, or a hexagon, 
the pin will help you fold when working with a square binding and adding the binding in place. Corners, angles, and now curves, binding knows no limitations. As you expand your quilting technique repertoire, you'll be able to draw upon earlier techniques. Curved edges are not to be feared, simply mastered. We're gonna master these curved edges with the use of purchased bias tape, not the made tape, but the purchased tape that comes on a card. It's pressed edges to the middle and then pressed in half, often called double fold bias tape. When working with curves, this may be your perfect opportunity to try this type of bias tape out, but we have to do some pre-pressing. Notice how I've cupped the bias tape, the edges, around the edges of the fabric. It's easy to do in the straight, when it's straight. And practice by pinning just the top layer and to the top layer of your fabric, not through just to the top layer. But then as you get to the corners, not corners, curves, shape the bias tape as you go around. Shape it so that it conforms to the curve and you'll be able to do this kind of inch by inch and then pin just the top layers. We're pinning only through the, those layers because as I flip this back, then I can see just one layer of fabric, just that single layer so I can stitch in the groove, stitch in the well of the seam. Now truth be told, most of the time when you buy a package of bias tape, it tells you to cup the edges and to do one row stitching. I have never in my career been able to put on bias tape with one row stitching. I have to do it with two and I'll show you how we do it. So I now have repinned all of my areas and I'm going to stitch in the well of the of the seam, stitching in the ditch of that fold. Now, as I get in here, I want to point out, perhaps you can see the, the seam. I'm, I'm going to stitch right down, but I stitch usually a hair to the right, so I'm not exactly at that fold. The reason, when I am wrapping the, the bias tape around the edges, it will conform a little bit better if I'm not exactly in that curved area and you can see it's stitching around and this is where it takes a little time and I'm also going to shorten my stitch length. As I'm getting to the curve I'm just going to bump it down one or two little notches so I'm stitching at 2.0 or 1.0 in the stitch length. And then as I'm coming around the curve use a stiletto or a seam ripper to help, oh, I'm getting my wrist in there, excuse me, to help shape this and I have just a little bit too much fabric so let me mold that around take it easy like driving in the mountains you drive slower and that's kind of what you stitch with a shorter stitch length as you're going around curves now we'll see how I've done sometimes I don't do my best sewing during television so we'll see what happens so as this has come around the corner it really does mold quite well, and because I have pre-shaped that corner, it does give a fairly good look. Now the sample that we sewed in, the, in our sewing studios is right here, and on the wrong side, you wrap the bias tape around so that it just meets the stitching line. That will allow you to do stitching from the wrong side to attach it down. You could use that decorative stitch technique I showed you earlier. That would certainly make it easy. But I'm just going to butt the edges together, the edge, I should say, of the bias tape to the stitching line, and just stitch around this edge. And use that stiletto or seam ripper, whoop, cover that edge. You'll do a better job than I am. And as I'm stitching, I'll hold it up to show you. Now the proof will be in the pudding, as we say, and we'll see if that, how that looks. But, oh, it looks quite well. The stitching is just around inside the edge, and it curves because we did that pre-shaping.
In my job, I have the honor of meeting amazing people. Today's Nancy's Corner guest is no exception. But she may have the added distinction of being extra special. My guest has entered and won numerous prizes at prestigious quilting shows. She stitches with accuracy and patience. Did I mention she's 10 years old? Please welcome Maria Judy, who joins us via Skype and is missing a half a day of school to be with us. Hello, Maria. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm, I'm very well. You know, when I read your story about how you started to quilt when you were a young girl and now how you've progressed, I'm so impressed. Tell our viewers about your first quilting project. My first quilting project, uh, I made fat quarters, but I cut them into smaller squares, and mm -hmm. then I sewed those together. And it's a large square fabric, and you, you like that, right? Yes. And then tell us about your second project. My second project, I went into a type of log cabin, mm -hmm. and I entered, no, I went to a quilting store to ask for if someone could quilt my quilt top. Yes, uh-huh. And then that's when I met Mrs. Geisler, and she quilted my quilt top. And Mrs. Geisler has been your mentor and friend in helping you learn to quilt, right? Yes. What a great friend to have, and your mom has helped you along the way. And there's a quilt behind you that you made. It's called Sherbert Stars. Wow, how many half-square triangles? Do you know how many are in there? 400 something. 400 something, yeah, that's, that's a lot of squares. And what's your favorite part about quilting, Maria? Uh, I love thinking of the idea of getting a pattern and uh -huh. if I could change it around and seeing what I could do with it instead of doing the exact copy. Sure, and you won a prize with some of your quilts. Tell our viewers about those. I, on my log cabin type of one, uh -huh. I won first place in Firehouse Show. Uh huh. And then Sherbert Stars, I went to Kansas to a national quilt show, and wow. I won second place there. And I also got a Peacers Award. I can see why you're just you're just amazing little girl and y your your name in in Chinese tell us what that means it means hope and my Chinese name is Shen Pen Pen it's a it's a beautiful name I have a Korean son and his name is Jung Ha and I don't know what it means, so I'm going to have to research that. We share another little thing in common. Obviously, I have part of my face doesn't work, and you have a little problem too, and you make everything work well. Tell our viewers about that. Um, I have my left arm. When I was born in China, mm -hmm. I, my arm was all twisted up during the birth process. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's a little hard for you to use it, but yet you make beautiful things, don't you? Yes, yes, I do. Now, the, qu the quilt behind you, I happen to know, is queen size, right? Yes. And you did the binding by hand, stitched it by hand, and tell, yes, the, I did. tell the story about your mom wanting to help you because she did some help, right? Right, she did. <laughs> So one day she wanted, she found out that she could help me with the binding. Uh huh. And then she did a few feet that day, and she, well, I came home and we both looked at it, and I had to tear it out and redo <laughs> it myself because she was horrible. <laughs> I think you'd have to tear out my binding stitching too, Maria. Don't worry, don't worry, Thalma, her mom. It would be the same way. And you stitched, you stitched like 12 inches a day, didn't you? Yes, I did for 32 days. 32 days, 12 inches a day to complete the binding. You put me to shame, Maria. I'm so impressed. This has been fun talking to you. What's your next quilt project going to be? I'm going to do a quilt top with a fabric like interweaving mm -hmm. together. 
and so that's what I'm it, planning to do it, next. It sounds wonderful. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for taking time off of fifth grade. Oh, Thanks. this is fun to have you here. We're going to interview you again to see your next project. Thanks, Maria. Thank you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this interview with Maria. You can go to nancyzeman.com, click under Nancy's Corner to find out more information. Of course, watch 52 of our Sewing with Nancy programs online. Thanks for joining us during this three-part series on fearless quilting finishes. Bye for now. Nancy has written a fully illustrated book entitled Fearless Quilting Finishes that includes all the information from this three-part series. It's $14.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2703. Order item number BK2703, Fearless Quilting Finishes, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Oliso. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.